It was Thanksgiving weekend, 1969, a very difficult time in U.S. history. I was 19 years old, working as a professional photographer in my dad's Palm Beach studio. I was about to board a helicopter for the very first time in my life. I knew where I was going. I just didn't know what to expect. My father and I were headed into a combat zone as the official photographers of what we now call the Palm Beach Pop Festival. Here's the story of that forgotten festival. people really understand and recognize and uh, all the street riots are, as an example of the 60s. They didn't exist or exist very long when a show of force was shown to them. And by the same token, this was the case there. And a lot less activity went on because we did show force there. They knew we were there. And uh, they knew we were not only there on ground, but we were there in the vicinity with force. And of course the sheriff was the one causing all the trouble. Uh, wanting to shut the thing down uh, without letting it happen because Woodstock had happened and now they're thinking all of these awful young people are going to come here and the Rolling Stones and Janice Jump, the whole show and so... Well, most of the churches were against it and uh, most of the city government because of the heat from certain people. The Zoning Commission acted after hearing more than three hours of testimony, most of it against the festival. Witness after witness testified the event would turn into an uncontrollable orgy. Well, the membership to this committee is swelling. Uh, we had a meeting in Belle Glade last night of uh, more than 100 interested and in influential citizens, including all oh, 30 to 50 ministers. The opposition was led by the Palm Beach Committee for Decency. Among those testifying for the committee was Mayor Sam Houston of Louisville, Texas, who described the festival held there last Labor Day as a near tragedy. Houston said his nine-man police force was at the mercy of the more than 100,000 persons in attendance. You have no control over it. Your community has no control over it because with such a mass of people and with so a few law enforcement officials and officers, you cannot adequately uh, maintain law and order. And of course, the main threat that was hanging over our head was the threat of riot. And at several times, we felt that it was imminent and uh, also felt that we would have probably been close to helpless if such a riot had occurred. And such a riot is possible at these pop festivals. Jess Moody was basically saying that the uh, religious alliance of churches would get behind it and would get the heat off their back. Uh, my facility is not a uh, pasture and field which Woodstock and the festivals that they tried to produce in the courtroom uh, were held at. Uh, these, these people did not have competent facilities. They did not have competent security. Uh, uh, people were invited to come there and get naked and uh, do all of these uh, obscene things for months and months ahead of time, yet the uh, government entities and the counties and states that they lived in did nothing to, to uh, stop this type of action. So therefore, I can only say to them, they got what they asked for. They said, we've got to ask for one thing, no nudity. And I said, well, I don't understand that. And they said, well, we are not going to let our children's minds be hurt by nudity. Uh, Arthur came, crowds were monstrous, was pouring down rain a lot of the time. That was the big problem. That really what made it uh, a, a devastating thing financially. So we were rattled. We were all sort of nervous because of the pressure that was being exerted on the festival personnel by the local police department and the, the floor of politics. Oh, the weather was, <laughs> I mean, it was cold, it was rainy, uh, muddy, uh, and I mean, everybody was all in there together. Uh, and it was just shivering cold at night. And uh, people were, I mean, their clothes were wet, their, everything they had was wet. 
bitterly cold when I mean, we played on the fest on the stage you know with these kind of hot air blowers keeping everyone warm so it was uh, yeah it was amazing so it was it was definitely a war zone so when we flew in it was daylight and and it looked like um, the day after a, you know an attack by the Viet Cong or something it turned so cold that I mean to tell you people were burning anything they could for warmth, for firewood and what have you. They were burning portalettes and, and bleachers and just about anything that was combustible, they were burning. I remember get, getting to the festival was uh, was quite fun because we got in a helicopter, it was late at night. We flew over the Everglades with a, a searchlight underneath the helicopter, you know, shining down on this pinky black water. We could see alligators flopping around in the water. And as we landed, another helicopter was landing and out of that helicopter came uh, the Jefferson airplane. And I'll never forget Spencer Dryden walking off the step, walking off this helicopter and going across the kind of causeway that he had to walk over to get to kind of dry land, as it were. And he fell in the water. He had to be dragged out of the water, soaking wet, you know, head to foot. Yeah, it was quite, I mean, we all laughed at him, of course, you know, being the cruel bastards that we are. But that was pretty funny, you know. And, uh, I said, some think it's your nose, some think it's your toes. I think it's your mind. I looked at him, I said, these are beautiful people. They're not really causing too much hassle. They're just being hassled. An energetic citizens campaign and zoning board opposition failed to block this festival. The critics warned it would be an uncontrollable orgy. By Sunday, they and the rest of the community will know whether their worst fears came true.